Hello again and welcome back to Chemistry It Is All That Matters and today we're going to talk about the quantum model which deals with electron clouds rather than orbits. So there are some limitations to the Bohr atom and as I told you in the previous video um, the Bohr atom is an oversimplification of the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus of the atom. So part of the problems with the Bohr model is uh, it tells us that the electrons are locked in fixed orbits and that's not necessarily the case. It also claims that the orbits are spaced equal distance apart and actually the orbits or clouds that we're going to talk about in the quantum model actually overlap and there are spaces um, where the electrons are traveling through. And uh, the other thing is the Bohr model talks about equal amounts of energy to move electrons up and down orbits and that also is not necessarily the case um, as we will see in the quantum model. So actually the quantum model is um, a model that says the nucleus is a highly dense concentrated centralized area of the atom but that the majority of the atom is actually empty space made up of these clouds and it is called the electron cloud model because electrons can be found in constant states of motion in a cloud shaped region surrounding the nucleus and that cloud shaped region is dependent upon whether we're in an s orbital or a p orbital or a d orbital and um, their location is entirely based on the amount of energy the electron has in that orbit. So what we're going to look at is that the quantum model allows us to have orbitals that are different sizes and shapes and all of the elements will have a 1s orbital as we saw in the electron configurations and uh, that orbital has one sublevel that holds two electrons. Then there's the 2s orbital and both of these orbitals, all the s orbitals, are spherical in shape. Remembering that the atom is three-dimensional. It's not a flat um, atom. It's actually a three-dimensional atom so therefore this s orbital is actually a sphere. And uh, the 2s orbital also has one sublevel and holds two electrons. But then when we get out into the p orbital, these orbitals are actually shaped kind of like teardrops connected together and uh, they actually are in three dimensions, the X, Y, and Z dimensions. Um, and there are three sublevels in the P orbital, and that allows two electrons per sublevel for a total of six electrons in the P orbital. So one of the other things about the Bohr model is that as you go, as electrons move up or down or um, enter or leave uh, an orbital energy level that it takes the same amount of energy to jump up or to go down a an energy level so in order to jump up an energy level the electron would have to gain energy in order to drop down an energy level the electron would have to lose energy and in the Bohr model it says that this energy value is exactly the same for every orbit However, in the quantum model, we understand that each orbital level takes less energy to move the electron. So to move the electron off of the first orbital level takes a greater amount of energy than it does to move an electron off of the fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh orbital. So even though there is more energy in each level, it takes less energy to move the electron. So the orbitals, these clouds in the quantum model, are shaped in a three dimension and the first orbital is always the s orbital and it is spherical in shape. Therefore it's centralized around the x, y, and z axis of the nucleus and the s orbitals always have one sublevel holding two electrons. As we move up to the p orbitals, um, we are seeing teardrop shaped clouds that uh, connect at the origin and there is an x pair, a y pair, 
and a z pair. So we have a px, a py, and a pz sublevel. Each sublevel can hold two electrons, so the p orbital can hold six electrons. And as I said, the sublevels are centered about the x, y, and z axis of the atom. As we jump up to the d orbitals, which are found in the transition metals, these also are teardrop in shape. There are five suborbitals. There's the dxy, which is actually between the x and y axis. There's the dxz, between the x and z axis. And the dyz, between the y and z axis. There's also the dx2y2, which is centered on the x and y axis. And then there's the dz2, which is centered on the z axis. Now, each of these sublevels can hold two electrons, making a grand total of 10 electrons in the d orbitals. So, as we talk about this, as you go down the energy levels on the periodic table from from period 1 to period 7, you actually increase the amount of energy available to the electron. But as you move from sub, uh, orbital 1 or period 1 to period 2 to period 3 to period 4, it takes more, less energy to move an electron up or less energy has to be lost to move the electron down as you go further and further on the periods. So this represents what we're going to talk about next, which is the orbital diagrams, or orbital notation. And the order of filling is 1s, 2s, 2p, back to 3s, 3p, then 4s, then 3d, then 4p, then 5s, then 4f, 4d, 4p, 5p, 6s, 5f, 5d, 6p, then 7s, 6d, and 7p. And we'll actually go through this in the next video, and we will fill in these boxes with our electrons, and that is known as orbital notation.